Shalom and good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcasting to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu invites Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas to his office in Jerusalem to try and reignite the long-stalled peace negotiations. Israel extends the distance it permits Gazan fishermen to head out to sea along certain parts of the coastline of the Palestinian enclave. U.S. President Barack Obama says NATO will assist the EU in preventing tragedies of migrants whom are trying to cross the seas illegally into Europe from happening. Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu stated during a meeting with Czech Foreign Minister Lubomir Zauralek at his residence in Jerusalem that it would clear his schedule for the week to make possible a meeting with Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas after the latter declared in an exclusive interview to Israeli media that he was willing to meet with Netanyahu in a bid to reignite peace efforts at any time. Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu said the first topic on the agenda would be ending incitement by the Palestinian leadership against Israelis, an allegation the Israeli leader directed at President Abbas many times in the past. A few days ago on Israeli television, uh, I heard uh, President Abbas say that if I invite him to meet, he'll come. So as I said uh, this morning to an American congressional delegation, I'm inviting him again. I've cleared my schedule this week. Any day he can come, I'll be here. Now, we have a lot of things to discuss, but the first item is ending the Palestinian campaign of incitement to murder Israelis. My door is always open to those who want to pursue peace with Israel. The Palestinian spokesperson's department had no immediate comment on the matter. In other news, Israel informed the United Nations that it would no longer permit the private import of cement into the Gaza Strip because many shipments were not used for the earmarked goals. This was announced by UN Special Coordinator for the Middle East peace process, Nikolai Mladenov. He said that he was working together with the Palestinians and with the Israeli government to settle the matter quickly and to prevent incidents that could lead to ending the import of other goods as well. UN officials said that the supply of construction material was vital for the rehabilitation of the many buildings damaged in the last round of fighting between the Islamist Hamas, which controls the Palestinian enclave, and the Jewish state, and that the people who used this material for other purposes were stealing from their own people, making their suffering even worse. In a related matter, Israel extended the distance it permits Gazan fishermen to head out to sea along certain parts of the coastline of the enclave. The fishing zone was expanded from 6 nautical miles, which is equal to about 11 kilometers, to 9 nautical miles, which is equal to 16 kilometers along Gaza's central and southern shores, a step that Israeli authorities said should result in a bigger catch in deeper waters, where fish are more abundant. Israel, citing security concerns that include fears of Hamas weapon smuggling, maintains a naval blockade on the Gaza Strip, and the zone will remain at six nautical miles in the northern areas near the Israeli and Egyptian borders, where smugglers have reportedly attempted to infiltrate the Palestinian enclave with concealed goods on several occasions. Palestinians have complained of frequent Israeli interceptions and arrests of fishermen who have strayed from the permitted fishing zone and of the confiscation of their boats and equipment. Nevertheless, the Israeli announcement of extending the fishing zones was welcomed by the Palestinian fishermen. احنا والله هذا اسعد اسعد خبر يعني سمعنا احنا الصيادين يعني انه بنعاني عندنا اطفال وبدنا نطعميهم ونعيشهم يعني والحمد لله وان شاء الله بوسعوا لنا الافضل The internationally recognized terror organization Hamas an offshoot of the Muslim Brotherhood violently seized control of the Gaza Strip in 2007 from their rival Fatah movement which is headed by western backed Palestinian president Mahmoud Abbas and has declared its mission of destroying the Jewish state, a fact Israel has had to deal with since, with sporadic rocket fire by Islamist organizations in Gaza towards Israel's southern communities over the years, 
as well as occasional confrontations with the Islamist Palestinian group Hamas to bring their aggression to a halt, move strongly condemned by the international community, which accused a Jewish state of using excessive force. Now, in other news, Israel's and Turkey's negotiating teams are scheduled to meet on Thursday in an undisclosed European country to discuss normalizing relations. A few days ago, Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan said that he anticipated positive results from the meeting, echoing previous statements by Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu, who also said that he hoped an agreement would be reached on fully rehabilitating relations between Israel and Turkey. Now to Washington, where U.S. President Barack Obama held a meeting with NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg, during which he said that the alliance could help the North African country of Libya against the Islamic State, as well as train and assist troops in other countries, including Iraq and Jordan, to fight the extreme Muslim group. One of the most important functions that NATO uh, is performing and can continue to perform is to help in the training and assisting process for uh, troops in Iraq, uh, in Jordan, uh, in many of the areas in the region. Uh, and we are continuing to cooperate on an ongoing basis about operations potentially in areas like Libya, where you have uh, the beginnings of a government. Uh, and uh, we can, I think, provide uh, enormous help uh, in helping to stabilize uh, those countries. Terrorism affects us all, from Brussels to San Bernardino. And uh, all NATO allies uh, contribute to the US-led efforts to uh, degrade and destroy uh, ISIL. And just last week, we started training of uh, Iraqi officers, and uh, we will continue to support the efforts of the United States and other countries to uh, fight uh, uh, ISIL. We also uh, discussed how NATO can uh, increase uh, our support to other countries in the region uh, to enable them uh, to stabilize their own countries and to fight ISIL. And therefore, uh, different ways of building local capacity is high on our uh, agenda in NATO. The American president also noted that NATO would tackle several of the challenges the world faces in the midst of refugees fleeing the Middle East wars, noting that it would assist in cooperation with the European Union to prevent tragedies of migrants who are trying to cross the seas illegally into Europe. Uh, we recognize that uh, there are a broad set of challenges uh, that have to be addressed uh, all around the world. And NATO is going to be working with uh, the European Union, for example, uh, to help prevent the tragedies that we saw last summer of uh, migrants taking very dangerous trips across waters to try to reach Europe uh, in cooperation with Turkey, Greece, and other countries. It's important for us to do that in a way that is humane. Uh, and thoughtful, uh, even as we're also working together to try to bring uh, an end to the Syrian conflict. Since the beginning of the Syria conflict, more than half a million people have been killed, with millions of refugees fleeing that country, causing the worst recorded refugee crisis since World War II, posing dire challenges to Europe and other regional countries that received large numbers of refugees. Thank you for watching us. You can also watch us at tv7israelnews.com or tv7.fi. For any comments, please send your emails to israelnews at tv7.fi. For more updates from Israel and the region, please join our Facebook page at TV7 Israel News. Praying for the peace of Israel and the peace of Jerusalem. I'm Jonathan Hassan, have a Erev Tov, and we will see you again tomorrow at the same time.